Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 123, and today I wanna to talk to you about my hearing aid evaluation process for new patients inside of my clinic who have already been treated with hearing aids at a different clinic. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notification bell if you wanna see more content like this. With that out of the way, I really appreciate it. Now let's talk about something even more important which is Memorial Day. On Monday, we will have Memorial Day here in the United States. It is basically a day that we pay our respects to individuals who have served our country and who have lost their lives doing so. So make sure that you do whatever it is that you need to do to pay your respects. And I really appreciate it if you would do so. With that said, the topic of today's video is all about what happens inside of my clinic when someone comes in, they have hearing aids already, and those hearing aids are probably still good enough for them to continue utilizing those devices. So um, this is something that actually happens a lot inside of my clinic. You know, individuals, they have received hearing treatment already. They may not be having the most benefit with those hearing aids, or they learn about different things that can be done with those hearing aids based on the videos that I put out there. And they decide that they, you know what, I wanna have an appointment with Dr. Cliff Olson, with you know Dr. Leslie Balderas, Dr. Bryce Altus, whoever, and come in and actually have us do an evaluation with their current devices. And um, it's a very structured process. It, it didn't used to be that way, but because it happens so often inside of my clinic right now, I would say that probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter to, to one third of the new patients that we have inside of our office already have hearing aids that they received somewhere else, and they either want to get new hearing aids or they want to make those hearing aids work even better. And so there's a very systematic process that we put them through. Number one, we have to figure out what it is that they're actually looking for. So we kind of identify all of the different aspects about their life that they feel like they're either not hearing well in or they feel like they're doing great in, whatever the case may be. So we can have a really detailed understanding of what it really is that they're looking for. Because one thing that I cannot do is read someone's mind in terms of what is most important to them with what they wanna hear. So we have to make sure that we are really putting them through the ringer, so to speak, to really divulge everything that they want to get out of treatment. Once we have an understanding of that, then we can kind of move through the different phases of what we would do at these appointments. So typically speaking, what would happen is, uh, and we have to explain this to every patient when they come in is, we have to do a hearing test. So we need an updated hearing test. Most individuals who come over from another clinic do not bring a hearing test with them. Some of them do bring a hearing test with them, but most clinics, as you know, do not follow best practice audiologic care. So there are usually things that are missing off of their audiograms that we would need to be able to see to make a better recommendation or to set up their hearing aids in a better way. So that's first and foremost, getting a hearing test done. The next thing that we have to do is make sure that we actually look inside their ears, make sure that they have no earwax. If they do, we need to pull that earwax out. Of course, if we see anything else inside of their ears that would warrant a medical referral, we would make that referral at that time. But what we do with the hearing aids that they currently have is that we actually have to take them into our workroom and do a cleaning on them. Now, I don't care you know, when the last time was that they went into their previous provider. Um, every single time someone comes into our clinic, we always find something inside of their hearing aids that needs to be cleaned out. Sometimes it is just absolutely egregious, the amount of debris that we pull out of their hearing aids. And other times it's just a light you know, cleaning that we have to do on those devices. But after that, this is probably the most important thing of this appointment, is that we actually have to put those hearing aids through a diagnostic test. We call this electroacoustic analysis. We use a test box to do this measurement with. And I would say that probably about 50 to 60% of the time when we do a cleaning on these devices, do our listening checks and all that, and then go in and do a diagnostic of these hearing aids, that we find that there's something wrong with them. Meaning we cannot continue on with this uh, this process that I'm uh, basically explaining to you right now. Essentially, you do not pass go. If a hearing aid does not meet manufacturer specifications, it doesn't matter what I evaluate on that hearing aid. It doesn't matter if I were to reprogram that hearing aid. That hearing aid is not going to function properly. And to think of the amount of hearing aids that come into our clinic that are not meeting specifications, it, it blows my mind. Because there are literally people walking around with hearing aids all day, every day, that are having malfunctioning hearing aids and they're, they're just not um, able to identify it completely, right? They, they might feel like they're not hearing very well, but some of the times they're not hearing well because their hearing aids are just malfunctioning. 
Um, and we already know that the vast majority of hearing clinics uh, are not running test box measures on their hearing aids, which means that they are literally programming even brand new hearing aids and sending patients out of their clinic with brand new hearing aids that are not meeting specifications. If we get a good diagnostic test, then we can continue on with the, the actual process here. So. Um, inside of our clinic, I would be the one to go and do the hearing test or an audiologist would be doing the hearing test while our audiology assistant is doing the cleaning of the hearing aids and the diagnostic testing of those hearing aids. If we pass diagnostic testing, essentially we all meet back up in my office. We do a detailed review of the hearing test that was done to help the individual understand exactly what was going on uh, with their hearing. And then we take the hearing aids and we hook them up to the programming software. So once we hook their hearing aids up to the manufacturer's software, we can get a general idea of how those hearing aids were set up, right? We can see all the different programming adjustments that were made or lack thereof in some cases. And then we can see um, essentially all the digital features and stuff like that that have been activated inside of those hearing aids. And on top of that, we try to explain kind of what we're seeing from just a baseline perspective. Because if I can see that a patient was sent home at first fit settings, you can easily see that in pretty much any manufacturer software. So I would basically say, hey, your hearing aids, while they did enter an audiogram in to program your hearing aids, they are basically just at the estimates and it hasn't even been customized for you at this point. That happens, I don't know, probably about uh, 20 to you know, 30% of the time or so, if I had to guess. Um, those numbers might be a little bit off, but if I had to guess about, you know, three out of every 10 individuals who come into the clinic, their hearing aids are just set at the regular settings, no adjustment has been made whatsoever. They basically just took them out of the box, hit auto program, put them in the patient's ear, said, how does that sound? And then they were done with the patient. So that's unfortunate, but I like to explain this to a patient so they actually understand what has been going on with their hearing loss. Because you have to remember, a lot of these individuals are, um, I would say emotionally tied to their hearing ability. And so a lot of them come in and they're just like, they're in despair. They don't know what else to do. They've been going to a provider for who knows how long and they just have not had success. And they're coming in and they're just like, they don't think that they're gonna have much success, but they're like, we're their last ditch effort at this point. And so any news is good news. And so if I can kind of share, hey, here's what's been going on. This, this uh, actually bodes well for you because it means that there's likely things that we can do to improve things further. But still at this point, I don't know, all right? So what we have to do is we have to hook them up to real ear measurement. Now, a lot of you guys have heard me talking about real ear measurement before, and I have videos talking about real ear measurement and how I go through the process of performing real ear measurement. So at this point, anyone watching this channel, if you do not know what real ear measurement is, what are you waiting for? Go watch my videos on real ear measurement because it is one of the most critical pieces of verification that you need to do to make sure that your hearing is a program correctly for your hearing loss prescription. So this is what I do. I hook the patient up with their hearing aids in their ears with the verification equipment set up the way it should be set up. And then I actually do a measurement of the amplification inside of their ear canals and I match it up on a screen to see how close or how, or how far off of their prescription that they are. Obviously, if they're very close to their prescription, then I'm basically telling the patient, okay, so based on everything that we've seen today, you're programmed pretty well with these hearing aids, meaning I don't think that anything that I would do would create a significant improvement for you, all right? And so then it becomes a question of, all right, um, how old are the hearing aids? Would they likely gain more benefit from getting newer devices? And then we have that discussion. Because if a hearing aid is anything, I would say more than four years old, there is a high probability that you would be getting more benefit with a newer hearing aid than you would with your existing hearing aid if that existing hearing aid has already been set up and programmed very well, right? So it's all about help understanding the expectations here. And the other side of this is, is that the vast majority, I would say probably eight out of 10 individuals, their programming is so far off that it's like, I have to do reprogramming of your devices. Now, here's the thing. Um, I learned very quick in my career that to try to take a one stab attempt at reprogramming a hearing aid that was not programmed correctly is a very, very bad idea, particularly if you have to order them custom ear molds because their hearing aids were improperly fit with rubber domes. 
And so if I have to order custom ear molds or if I have to do an extensive amount of reprogramming, I require patients to go through a full 45 day fitting sequence. Now, if you're unaware, at least in my clinic, there are four appointments inside of a 45 day fitting sequence. There's the fitting appointment, there is a one week, three week and six week follow up. Uh, sometimes we shift that one week around if it's someone who flew in from out of town and we might make it like a, a two, four, six or something like that. But the point being here is that there are best practice protocols that we must be following to optimize performance with hearing aids. Now, if it was just like a little tweak that I do, it'd be like, oh, okay, it looks like you're a little shy at 6,000 hertz, I need to increase some amplification. That's one thing. But if it's like, okay, there is about 60 things that I need to do with your hearing aid programming, there's no way that we're gonna be able to do all that inside of one appointment and have someone actually have a good response to that. Not to mention, if I make a significant adjustment inside of someone's hearing aids, they go home, they experience the world in a completely different way. They may come back and say, hey, I like this and this, but this is bad now. And so then we have to go in and actually fix the bad stuff and make more good stuff, if that kind of makes sense. And so this is really the process that we have to go through. So if it's someone who's you know, really close to being onto their prescriptive targets and everything that I can see inside of the software has already been maximized based on the wants and needs of that particular individual, then we have to have the discussion of new technology, okay? If it's someone though who is egregiously off or the, the programming is just wrong inside of their hearing aids, then I always prefer to have the discussion of, okay, here's what we can do to reprogram your devices. But at the same time, there's also the potential that new technology would be more beneficial for you. Now, again, it comes down to time frame. If it's something that is like a hearing aid that's two years old, I am not gonna be making a recommendation unless that hearing aid is just flat out incapable of treating their particular hearing loss. And so at that point, uh, if it's older than four years, I will at least bring up the subject because I, what I don't wanna do is charge someone to take them through a full fitting sequence with the old set of hearing aids only to have a year later then be like, so I was thinking about doing new hearing aids and now they have to go through an entire new fitting sequence again, right? It's just a waste of money. So this is kind of my methodology with it. And I wish that there was a hard and fast rule of saying, hey, if a hearing aid is X amount of years old, or if you're whatever the case may be that you have to get new hearing aids, I just don't feel like it's that way. Um, just based on experience, you can make a hearing aid that's a couple of years old perform substantially better than the way it's been performing as long as you program it correctly. And when I say correctly, I mean correctly. I mean, there are actual things that you need to do when you're programming hearing aids to make sure that you are programming it the right way, right? And it's not an opinion matter um, in a lot of cases. Now, there is subjective and objective measurements that need to happen here. So when you do a reprogramming, you have to do the objective Wheeler measurement verification, but you also have to do the subjective stuff. So anytime you're doing a reprogramming or rather anytime I'm doing a reprogramming of someone from another clinic, I have to find out specifically what situations they are going to use as a gauge to determine how much benefit they are going to get from those reprogrammed hearing aids. And only then, only after we go through a 45 day fitting sequence and after we do a post outcome inventory of these subjective markers, are we gonna be able to identify, did we actually do a better job in treating this individual's hearing loss? And, um, 10 times out of 10, the answer is yes, right? Because if it was a situation where I'm like, I do not believe that I can get substantial improvement with this individual, I'm gonna recommend that we just continue on the same path. Um, and then of course, if I see egregious issues, we're gonna do a whole refitting and then come out better on the other end. So it, at the end of the day, the patient's either gonna know that they are at their maximum performance capability or they are not, but here's what we can do to get it and we will get it. All right, so that's kind of how it works inside of my clinic. It seems rather extensive. I mean, it's more than just someone comes in with, old, with hearing aids from another clinic. We're like, oh, you just have to get new hearing aids, right? That's not how it works. I mean, if you have hearing aids already, even if they are over four years old, there's potential that those hearing aids could actually work better than what they are right now, uh, especially if they're malfunctioning and you don't even know it, right? <laughs> you think that it's you or you think that whatever, um, that the hearing aids just need to be adjusted. And in reality, they were never meeting manufacturer specifications. And here you are walking around all day with hearing aids that just flat out don't work. So um, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover today. I just, you know, I think it's important that people understand that they don't have to get new hearing aids every single time they feel like they're hearing poorly. Um, while new hearing aids can most definitely improve your performance because technology keeps advancing at the speed of light at this point, 
um, there are there is still life that you can squeeze out of your existing devices as long as you have all the T's crossed and all the I's dotted when you're getting those devices readjusted. So um, if you are someone who needs help with your existing hearing aids, it might be a good idea to find a provider who is following best practices to make sure that they can go through an actual sequence, a very structured sequence to identify, is it that you need new hearing aids or do you just need your current hearing aids reprogrammed? That is all that I wanted to talk about today, guys. Again, have a happy Memorial Day tomorrow. Pay your respects and as always, I'll see you next week.